All right, what's going on everyone? I just wanted to make a quick video here today showing the electrical uh, power setup, I guess, or upgrade that we did to our house and garage. Uh, we're in Winnipeg, Canada, and uh, we bought this house in July of this year, and we decided that one of the first things that we were gonna do was upgrade the power. So it had a 100 amp service in the house, and I wanted to upgrade to a 200 amp service, so that, so that way I could bring um, better power to the detached garage that was already existing here that just had some basic power. So uh, here's a couple things that we did. I'll start in the garage, show you what we did in the garage, and then I'll take you in the house and I'll show you what we did in the house. Okay, here's just a quick shot of the garage. It's a 22 by 20 or 21-ish. It's not too big of a garage, but big enough to get my truck in. Um, this was a bare stud garage when I uh, when we first moved in, so I installed electrical, I uh, insulated it, and I drywalled. I installed that heater, and as well as all the electrical that's in here. So, <clears throat> a couple things, uh, just from the power, speaking of power in here, uh, what happened was we originally had the 100 amp service to the house, which was brought in. So, what we have at this property is we have a front driveway coming from the street, and it comes into, comes into the garage, our house is just right up there, but we also have a back lane that goes back behind the house. So you can see, if I look and show you here, here's our back lane, you can see on the cameras, this is where our back lane goes behind the garage, but this is our driveway to the street, and so our house is here, and then you enter the garage on this side. So there's a big long driveway that goes beside the house. <clears throat> so, the mast was originally here on the house, but what we did when we upgraded the service was we decided to go and get the mast moved to the back of the garage, and then we feed the house as a 100 amp sub panel. So everything um, in terms of service enters into the property right here. And so we have a 200 amp service and a big panel in the garage, a little bit bigger than really I need out here, but it's got, uh, it's more than enough for the property as well as uh, the garage. So out here I have multiple circuits, 20 amp circuits, cause I put 20 amp circuits on that wall, this wall, this wall, as well as a 30, 50 amp for potential welder or a uh, car charger or something like that. And um, lights and stuff like that. So that's that. You can see in this panel, sorry, this is the 100 amp breaker that feeds into the house. Aside from that, what happens from here, from that 100 amp breaker, it goes into this tech cable and I had to dig two trenches from the back of the garage here, one for the natural gas line that runs up uh, to the front corner of the house where the meter is and then another trench for where this goes and punches in through the foundation of the house and uh, where we put our new panel in the houses. So I dug those two trenches at the same time. I, we laid tech cable in one of them and then we laid uh, the underground buried cable, or sorry, buried um, gas line for the natural gas. So other things here that are important for this setup, uh, since we moved the mass, we also had to move the internet. So we have our cable internet coming in here. It goes up, goes to our modem and then router. And then we got a DVR for the cameras. So we put in, I pre-wired all the corners of the garage and then I had to crawl in the front corner of the house to get, uh, to put a corner or sorry, put a camera on that corner of the house. So we, the DVR sits in here, all the ethernet wires back into here. I ran as well while the trench was in, I ran a, a uh, inch and a quarter conduit from here to the house so that way I could pull cables if need be and inside that conduit I have um, a run of fiber as well as one run of ethernet right now that one run of ethernet I had to run to the camera because I couldn't run it through the fiber then back to the DVR so in terms of the internet it comes into here again like I said the modem router and then the router I go uh, from the local area network into a media converter which converts ethernet to fiber that fiber line runs down through the conduit all the way to the house and then same thing on the other side i'll show you 
is again this media converter that runs from this so it converts the fiber to the ethernet and then i run it to a switch so i have five ports of ethernet in there if i need to use it uh, other things out here i got the tv so that's continuous monitoring or display of the cameras that i have active uh just showing you the heater real quick. This I uh, got it at Princess Auto, it was on sale, but uh, I mounted it myself right to the trusses. It's not very heavy. And then I drilled that hole in the wall, put the wall thimble, and then I had a gas guy come in and they they did all hard gas line. I guess that's code here in Manitoba. We just moved here, so I'm not really uh, sure about all the code, but they, wire, or they plumbed in their swing joint here. They did uh, another swing joint outside, I think. Um, before it goes into the ground. I'll show you back real quick and then they did the same thing on the other end of the house. As you can see I wired an outlet up there for uh, this unit too. So it's got gas, electricity, and then the exhaust vent on there. It's pretty simple. It heats up the garage nice and then I've got the thermostat just right over here so I can set the thermostat to whatever I want and it runs pretty good. I keep it above zero in here um, just to make sure nothing freezes. And so none of that equipment, um, sees too cold of temperatures, but otherwise for this small heated garage, it seems to work pretty good for me so far. Uh, the only thing I have left to do is this is a window, but it's a single pane window. Um, so come uh, spring or summertime next year, I'm going to take that single pane out and put a window in there. Um, that's double pane or thermally insulated. Uh, other neat thing real quick while I'm out here. I pre-wired before I put the um, drywall up, I pre-wired for passive speakers. So I've got um, these pass-through wall plates uh, that just have speaker wire run behind the drywall and then it comes down here to another pass-through plate and then I've got this small little Bluetooth amp um, that I just uh, hook, hook up to through my phone. So it hooks up to through Bluetooth and then I control the volume treble bass there and it sounds pretty good. Uh, these lights. Got off, got off of Amazon. There are two, there are eight footers connected to each other, so they're 16 foot lengths. I've got them in three separate uh, switches. I wired them so I can turn them on and off individually if I want. Uh, these lights have been working pretty good so far. I like the brightness. Um, because of the headroom in here, I had to, I originally had outlets here and I was just going to plug in these, but I had to do pass through plates because as this door comes up, it gets very close to the ceiling here. Um, so I had to come up with a solution to make it as close to the ceiling as I could so the door could open. Otherwise, that's pretty much it out here. So I'm gonna show you the back of the garage real quick, show you that new mast uh, where that comes in, and then I'll show you where it punches into the house, uh, and then I'll run into the house and show you the house. Forgot to mention one more thing out here. I have a floodlight at the back of the garage that goes down onto the back lane that is motion activated. I can turn that on and off with this switch. And then I had pre-wired a switch here that I ended up not using, but I was planning to use it for the uh, two lights, the two lights that are on the front of the garage um, to see if I could operate it from here. But I ended up just going the route of, we still control it through the house. The original wire that came to this garage that's the only live wire and it just feeds those two lights on the front of the garage um, so so that's controlled from in the house and then out here all the power is fed through that panel all right here's just at the back of the garage this is the new mass that comes in so you can see the poles on our back lane that's where the power comes in so that power line originally went right over the garage and it was almost touching the peak of the roof which was not ideal. The cable line for the internet was touching the peak of the roof, so I didn't like that at all. So we decided to change um, to change that, and this is how it's now um, wired into here. You can see my back floodlight. You can see the exhaust vent for the heater, and here's the gas line that comes in. This is where the trench starts. So they had their swing joint here with a shutoff valve. Here's the conduit that I ran. And then in this left conduit is the grounding cable. And then this is the tech cable on the right. And there's where the new meter is. And you can see they punch through there with the <clears throat> internet cable. So the trenches go from here 
all the way up to the corner of the house where it punches in for electrical, and then the gas goes around the corner to the front corner of the house where the gas meter is, and then comes up. So the electrical punches in um, just below here, and then that's the conduit that is uh, comes in above grade. So the electrical punches in below grade, and then the conduit's still above grade. And here's the connection for the uh, gas meter. So here you can see from the house side uh, what it looks like. So the garage is at the back of the house, driveway up the side, and you can see where the new mast is at the back of the garage. So originally the mast was right about here, just to the left of this window and to the right of the back door. But that power line and internet line used to come right up above the garage and it used to almost touch the peak of that garage and come into that mast. So I'm gonna run downstairs and show you where the original electrical was and I'll show you where we decided to move the 100 amp panel. All right, so we're down in the basement now. Here's the, uh, just underneath the stairs. Here's where the original electrical panel was just mounted. You can see where these junction boxes are and then the wiring that runs to the new panel. But uh, this is where the original panel was. What, what was here, it had a fused breaker box that had like a big lever on it, had the original breaker panel, and then it had a, a newer uh, sub panel off of it. That was maybe from like the 90s. Uh, but what originally had here is that came in through the mast. You can see that um, steel piece of conduit there came in and then uh, it fed into that breaker box, original panel, and then the sub panel, and the house, was, house power was distributed from there. So I paid an electrician to come in and put the, to relocate the panel, so he put the new mast on and then he came in, added these junction boxes, and then they ran wire all the way to the mechanical room, which is where we decided to put the new panel. This was kind of a weird spot though, because the panels were so high up that you couldn't really access them. And then even the door, they had to notch out a piece of wood to be able to open up the um, access door on the panel, which was kind of odd. And then the other thing is it's right above a sink too, so not an ideal location. So we thought it would only be fitting to add the electrical panel into the existing mechanical room where our water tank is, our um, furnaces, we have a floor drain as well as our sump pump. Only makes sense to co-locate co most of the utilities if we can. So what we did here was we had the 100 amp panel installed here. The electrician wired in all the um, wire runs from the junction box. And then what they did in here was they have a 100 amp breaker on this side from the garage. And then they ran a bunch of split breakers to give us more room for expansion if we wanted in the future. And uh, so they did all that wiring. And then, like I said, in terms of the internet that comes in, so that uh, <clears throat> the fiber and ethernet that runs through that conduit is just behind that piece of insulation that punches through the foundation, comes into here, goes into my media converter, converts to ethernet, and then it converts to, or sorry, the ethernet goes into a switch. And this is a PoE switch. Uh, so what I ran off of this guy is a length of ethernet that goes um, into our bedroom closet, it goes all the way up to the attic, and then it goes to the center of the house, punches down in the uh, center of the house hallway where it has a Wi-Fi access point. So that broadcasts Wi-Fi to the entire house. So I have Wi-Fi out here, and then I have Wi-Fi out in the garage from the um, modem router combo. Otherwise, that's pretty much the setup here. I put in on both ends, I put these these power bricks just to give me power for things like these. I installed this piece of plywood on this side as well as the one in the garage just to mount the panels to. Um, I guess it's code here for the grounding on the sub panel. You've gotta go all the way up. They were saying to the uh, water shut off, but they just ran to one of the hard copper lines here and then tied in here and just clamp it to that So there's the panel on this side. Okay, so hopefully that gives you an idea of you know what you can do with some of your electrical panels um, In this case here in Winnipeg, Manitoba in Canada That's what we decided to do when we upgraded our service to 200 amp so that way we could both get power to the garage as well as um, safe power to the house and have a new updated panel that is 
not only safe, but it's going to last a long time. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions on this setup that I didn't cover in this video, just please leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Cheers.